we praise God. What a wonderful Savior we have. What a wonderful God we have. He's our good Savior. He's our good God. He's our healer. He's everything to us. We've got to keep ourselves looking unto him as the author and the finisher of our faith. He sees all things. And uh, some of the things that we don't see in the natural, he sees it. So that's the reason we got to see things through the eye of faith and see as he sees. And the only way we could see as he sees is going through the scriptures and the help of the Holy Spirit. Going through the scriptures and, and the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's very important. And I believe... We can read the scriptures, but then we need help. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And each and every one of us, we have the word, but at the same time, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to make things clear in our lives. Let me take you to the book of Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, we see the Ethiopian uh, eunuch, he has come to Jerusalem and he was on his way back, going back to his country. And while he was returning, he was sitting and reading. And in Acts, in Acts chapter 8 and verse number 28, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. So he was reading about Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip. Now see, this man was reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet of God. And at the same time, we find that the Holy Spirit said to Philip, right? In verse number 29, then the Spirit said unto Philip, go near, join thyself. To this chariot. Now we see how the word and the spirit together. See, we can read the word all day long and have some knowledge, but it's only the Holy Spirit who is inside of us can give us a revelation. While he was reading, he didn't understand nothing. He was wondering what it was, but the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip and said, Go near. He's reading the Bible, he's reading the word, but he needs some enlightenment. Go near, join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read. Now he would have been reading loud, trying to understand. And, uh, and Philip ran thither to him and he heard him read the uh, prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? He said, how can I accept some man should guide me? See, he said, some man needs to guide me. Not some man. You need a spirit-filled man. Not just any man who could interpret the scriptures. You can give somebody the, the most intelligent person in the world to read this Bible and get a revelation or bring understanding. It can never happen. You have to have a spirit-filled man. And we know that Philip was a spirit-filled man. So are you. So are you. You have the spirit of Christ in you. You have the spirit of God in you. Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the, pro uh, read the prophet Isaiah and said, understandest thou what thou readest? And then he said, how can I accept a man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he, should, he would come up and sit with him. How important is the Holy Spirit to us? How important is the Holy Spirit who, who lives inside of us? He needs, he needs to explain things to us. Revelation can come only by the explanation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can reveal things to you. You know, we, we, we know, we know the Bible. We might say, I know the Bible. I know the stories in the Bible. I know I have heard about everything in the Bible. I've read the Bible. I've, I keep reading the Bible. I've been to messages. That's the reason you've got to listen to spirit-filled messages. That's how you get revelation. That's how you get understanding. That's how you say, yeah, now I know it. 
Yep, I have woken up now. Now I know what it means. So Philip encourages him and the place of the scripture. Uh, and, and then he desired or he invited Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You see, the Holy Spirit is willing to sit with you and talk to you and explain things to you. It's important that you time, take time with the Holy Spirit. You may be reading a scripture, but you need the explanation of the Holy Spirit. You need the explanation of the Holy Spirit. And he's willing to come and sit with you. In fact, he's already inside of you. He can explain to you. That's the reason you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Many Christians we find we move around with people and they know a lot of scripture, but they don't have any revelation of the scripture. They don't have much of an understanding of the scripture because the revelator is the Holy Spirit. Hold on to this scripture. Let me take you to the book of uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter and chapter number 1. I can have a Bible, I may know all that is written in the Bible, but I would, find I would be still dry. I would be still dry without the Holy Spirit. I know the Bible is very important. I know the Bible is very important, but I need the Bible as much as I need the Holy Spirit to explain things to me. See, you can see some people amongst, uh, amongst the Christians, they, they read the Bible, they know the Bible, they have a Bible at home, but they don't have any, there's no life in them. They are, they're dead, dead like, like the world. Who will, I mean, they are dead like people who are not born again. But that should not be in the case of a believer. You've got to lean unto him. You've got to understand the scriptures through him. Second Peter chapter number one and verse number 20, 2 Peter 1 and verse, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. This is not the book of a man that a man can explain to you. No prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation of any man. That's the reason you've got to be fully convinced that this is the word of God. This is it's just not a historical book which tells you about some holy people. This is the word of God. This is how the Holy Spirit wanted it written. And there are many unholy things that are written in the Holy Bible, which is for our examples for us to know. I mean, looking at or the Old Testament, we would see there's a lot of unclean things that are mentioned there. There is homosexuality that is mentioned. There is murder and killing and, and uh, all kinds of bloodshed. Prostitution is mentioned in the Bible. There is so much. In this Holy Bible, we find people who have deviated and done things that are, that are evil, that's the reason this ought to be the manual for the human race. This ought to be the manual for mankind. Go to the manual and read it. It tells you that things are wrong. What things are right and what things are wrong. It's not what I feel that is right. It is what God says that is right. Now he's no dictator. He's a loving father. He has laid boundaries concerning things that are unclean so that we would enjoy life to the fullest. He has kept these boundaries for us, not for any reason, not because he doesn't want us to have fun. He wants us to have, he's the God of all pleasure. In fact, the Bible says in the book of Psalm chapter 16 and verse number 11, he says, in thy presence there is fullness of joy. And in thy right hand there are pleasures. So where are you seated? You're seated together with him on the right hand side of the Father. In his right hand there are pleasures for him. God is a God of pleasure. He's not somebody who is boring. But he has placed boundaries so that all the pleasures that we have is according to his nature, his character, and his design. That's the reason we've got to go to this manual and find what 
what it really means. Thou will show me the path of life. What, it, what does it mean to enjoy life? Walking this path of life. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. If you have God in you, you have joy. Right? If you have God in you, you have joy in you. You cannot stop the joy that is in you because that joy of the Lord is your strength. Right? That's your strength. You, you can enjoy life to the fullest. And in his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God has placed the boundaries and he has shown judgments have come upon people. Sodom and Gomorrah was judged because of their evil acts. And even, even in the near future, we are going to see the judgment of God. The grace period is all open right now for people to get saved because God let Jesus have uh, be punished for the sins of mankind. But there comes a time that God will uh, judge. He's the judge of the universe. He's going to judge everyone according to their works. So, it says, going back to the book, that's the reason we got to read this book and have the help of the Holy Spirit for revelation. Not just read this book alone and get some information. You need more than information. You need revelation. You need a revelation. If you don't have a revelation, then you, you're still going to be dry. And revelation can only be by the Holy Spirit. Knowing this first, that no prophecy, going back again to the book of Second Peter chapter 1 and verse number 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, the entire book is a book of prophecy. Right? The entire book is a book of prophecy. All what is to happen has already been mentioned in this. So no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No man just got to, uh, 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 no man put himself together and say, okay, now let me just put this for the future. No, it didn't. It's not of any private interpretation. For the prophecy, verse number 21, for the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man. People had their willpower. And they use their will in writing books, but this is incomparable to any other books. This book is incomparable to the, 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 the books that have been written. There may be some wonderful books that are written. They can be stories, they can be real, but this book will lead you to life. This is the book of life. Right? The prophecy came not of old, by the will of man. It was not somebody who just decided and said, okay, I'm just going to put something for the, for the younger generation, maybe the future generations. No, it didn't happen. But holy men, the word holy men, it simply means people were cut off. They were set apart. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So who is the author of this book? We have different names, the book of Peter, the book of John, the book of, uh, well, Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit himself, right? Holy men spoke as they were moved. Holy men, those men who were set apart, they decided and God chose them, God spoke to them and they obeyed. God proved them first, checked whether they are willing to walk this walk and do things and we find that people, holy men, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit spoke to them, and they started writing this, writing this, they started writing things down. And that's how we have got this in printed matter. And the Holy Word is already in heaven. It is already settled in heaven. We cannot make another one of this. It is already settled in heaven. Let me take you to the book of Psalm. Uh, 119 and verse number 89, it tells us, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay, it's already settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, forever, which means all together forever. O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's already settled in heaven. That cannot be changed. 
is already in him. People can try to change the translations and take words out. By the way, we know some of the newer translations are taking words out. They're taking words out because eventually it's, it's people, are, people are going to suffer actually in the, in the near future. They're going, they going to find that the Bible is not the, not the proper translation. Lots of things that are taken away from the Bible. The name, some, some of the places you find the Holy One is taken out. They just put the one and only one. Or, I mean, there are, and then there are places where the Holy Spirit is taken out. His spirit is just mentioned. And there are many spirits. The Holy Spirit is, the word holy is taken out. Some of the places the word blood is taken out. The blood of Jesus Christ is taken out, or the, only the blood, the word blood is there in the new test, new, newer translations. And, and we kind of think well, it's easy for people to understand. They understand, but they just keep reading and know nothing at all about it unless they have the witness of the Holy Spirit. Unless they have the witness of the Holy Spirit, right? So I believe it's important for us to have a, a good Bible. I'm, I'm using the King James Version. I feel safe with that. But I still trust in the Holy Spirit, the author who lives inside of me and he helps me to understand the Bible better. He elaborates things and he gives revelations. So as uh, no prophet, the prophecy came, came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one who can give you revelation. That's the reason you've got to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not, when, when we say read the Bible, we, we, are, we are talking about fellowshipping with the Father. When we talk about reading the Bible, take a Bible, buy a Bible, read the Bible, spend time with the Bible, which means we're talking about Spend, spending time with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, right? Spending time with your everlasting Father, spending time with your Redeemer, the Lord God Almighty, and he's going to teach you. So we find Philip, although he understood, he, he, although he had, a, he had a word, he had the book of Isaiah, but he didn't understand. He was just reading it. While he was reading, he didn't understand Let's go back again to the book of uh, Acts chapter 8, verse number 31. And he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? People can misguide you. That's the reason you cannot listen to an eloquent speaker who is not even spirit-filled. There are eloquent speakers. There are speakers who are so, I mean, full of the knowledge of this word, but they'll only puff your brains up, that's all. That's how it is. Somebody has to be spirit-filled to give you the revelation, right? In, in 1 Corinthians 8 and verse number 1, 1 Corinthians 8 and verse number 1, it says, it says, knowledge, and now as touching things offered unto idols, we know, we uh, we know that we all have knowledge, but knowledge puffs up. Knowledge only would, would keep you uh, proud-hearted. I know something. But love, that word in King James, it says charity, but it also means love. Who is love? God is. And who is God? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who edifies you. So when you see the word love, God is love. And who is God? God is the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit edifies you. Knowledge alone is not enough. People are so knowledgeable of lots of things, but then they don't have the insight of understanding what the Holy Spirit teaches them, right? They would, they would rather listen to man because it's cheaper or it's, it's hardly any time. They would just listen to any man and they wouldn't even discern or judge whether it's of God or whether it's of man. You know, it never said for you not to, it never said just follow anything that comes. You've got to know 
You've got to discern. You've got to rightly discern. People just preach any old thing they want to today. And we have so many people who are so gullible, they would just say, oh, it's all right. It seems to be all right to me. I'll just take it. They're not going to stand stable. There is no stability at all in, in, in taking teachings from all over and filling your mind up and thinking, well, I'm doing a lot of study now. I'm doing a lot of research. Well, are you doing it by the help of the Holy Spirit or are you doing it by your willpower? Because we can be led astray. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. And anytime, anytime I'm... I'm I read something, I read something that is not right, I say, no, I'm not going to agree with that. I don't agree. Now, I'm not too judgmental, but, I, but I'm still, I, I, I need to discern. I need to discern. Let me take you to the scripture, the book of 1 John, I'm sorry, one, uh, John. Okay, we'll read 1 John first. 1 John first. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 1. Beloved, Believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit. There are all kinds of spirits. Any spirit would just come and say, I'm the Holy Spirit, I'm talking to you. But believe not every spirit. But God says, try the spirit. Even if you have to try the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't mind. He wouldn't mind because he says, try the spirits. How would you know if you don't try, if you don't discern? It is, you know, when people go around saying, oh, don't touch not his anointed, you've got to know that there is something wrong somewhere because you are anointed as well as he's anointed. As much as I'm anointed, you are anointed. As much as the greatest and the famous preachers are anointed, we too are anointed. So when people say, touch not his anointed, you're talking about Old Testament, God appointed King Saul as the king and then when David had a confrontation with him, David said, he's an appointed person by God. He's anointed of God. I'm not going to touch him. That's none of my business. That's between he may be wicked, he may be evil, but I'm not God. I'm not going to take his place. Because he knew that he's going to be, he, he knew the anointing that was upon his life. He knew it was, there was a time that he had to wait until he would be king. But he was anointed as a king when he was a little boy. When, 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 when Samuel came to Jesse's house and anointed him as a king, but he was still not in position. Although God has already proclaimed that he's going to be the king, a man after God's own heart. But he didn't want to take somebody else's place while he was a king. So when everything came to, when, 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 when King Saul died, it was then that he walked in to the position. So that didn't mean that was in the old covenant where he, he said, that's not my place. I'm not going to take that place. Likewise, we don't have to try to take another man's position or place. Right? But that does not mean that you have no right to judge. It says, try the spirits. When people make such statements, they try to only put fear on you. Touch not God's anointed. They only try to fear, put some fear on you. Well, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he has given us a spirit of discernment. He has given us a spirit. We, the spirit of discernment is in us. How are we going to discern? Are we going to discern right? Or are we going to just simply go in? So believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. Try the spirits whether they are of God because many false, many false prophets are gone out into the world. Many false prophets are gone out into the world. God knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. This was written about 2,000 or some thousand odd years ago. He knows what he's talking about. He knows that there will be false prophets, false teachers, false people who, are, who call themselves anointed. They would even come in Jesus' name. They would come in Jesus' name and they would try to deceive people into believing. 
in doing signs and wonders. How are we going to know whether it's of God or not? Well, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He's going to tell you. That's the reason you've got to communicate. Have the Bible open with you. And also let the Holy Spirit communicate with you. Speaking in tongues is very important. We might despise it. Some, some say, I don't believe in speaking in tongues. They're all done away with the apostles. No, they're not done away with the apostles. We are spirit-filled, and people who are spirit-filled now in this age, they are speaking in tongues. So I believe it's, it is for all of us. It's all, every one of us. We need to pray in tongues. There's nothing wrong in praying in tongues. There's nothing wrong in praying in tongues. If you don't want to, that's a different thing, but that's a different. But you have to pray in tongues because there is discernment. You, you start discerning things in the spirit. Praying in tongues, praying with understanding. The Bible says, I didn't say it or I didn't bring it up. The apostles are long gone when the book of Corinthians were put, put together. The book of Corinthians, we believe the book of Corinthians, we believe everything that, every other thing in the book of Corinthians except for speaking in tongues. How come? People believe so much of the book of Corinthians and when they are really, really um, uh, 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 misjudged or mistreated, they would just say, oh, you don't have any love. Just read the book of love from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Well, Chapter 14 says, speak in tongues. So why would I want to despise speaking in tongues? Right? So I believe it's important. And uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians again. And chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Right. We'll read uh, 28. We'll read, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, 29 we'll read. Let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. Well, you have heard, don't judge prophets. But why does the, the Bible say let the prophets speak and let the others judge? Discern, don't solo. Discern and then it's going to be good. It's healthy for you to discern rightly. It's good for us to discern things rightly. So it's only by the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Right? Jesus said in uh, John chapter 7 and verse 24, he says, don't judge according to the appearance. Right? Don't judge according to the appearance. Verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance. Don't judge in the flesh. Don't just go around judging people. It's none of your business to go and judge people, everybody, and condemn them. But when it comes to your life, you can discern. You should be able to discern rightly. Don't, it says judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous. You are called to judge righteous judgment. What is righteous judgment? Having the word of God. Judging according to the word of God. Right? Righteous judgment. Right? Having the word of righteousness. Uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 24. Or four, I'm sorry, 14. Hebrews 5 and verse 14. Or we'll read 13. 13. Everyone that, is, uh, everyone that uses milk is unskillful. You know, people are not skilled in certain things. They, they can play, but they don't, they're not professionals. They're not skillful. They are unskillful. Everybody can play. You give a ball to somebody, we can all play. But you need some skillful people to play it right. Everyone that uses milk they are unskillful. They are unskillful in the word of righteousness. So having the word of righteousness is very important. Right? So that's how you judge. And the next word says, the next word says, strong meat, which is the word of righteousness, belong to them that are of full age. And every one of us who have been in the kingdom of God, who are walking with God, 
We are supposed to understand that we are supposed to be of full age. Who have used, but who even those who by reason of use, by reason of use, you start living according to the word of God. And you start using the word of God. You can't isolate yourself into one corner and say, it's all right, I'll just be myself and I, I will take care of myself. Now you've got to use the word of God. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You've got to have some experience. Right? You've got to use the, use the knowledge that you have by the help of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and you, when you come to a place where you are between two, good and evil, you can discern. This is right, this is wrong. This prophecy is of the flesh, this is of the spirit. Prophecies don't just come immediately demonic, they come in the flesh. Satan cannot immediately use somebody, he has to get proud hearted, and then once a person is proud hearted, then Satan starts using him. It all starts in the flesh. Let me tell you, let me, I'll back that up with scripture. Let me take you to the book of uh, First Timothy. Okay, let's go to the book of Timothy. Timothy, 1 Timothy, and chapter 3. Right? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Right? A novice. Not a novice. Don't appoint a novice. Lest he becomes pride, uh, f- uh, lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. When you fall into the condemnation of the devil, then the, s- then the devil is able to speak through you. Right? Somebody has to fall into the hands of the enemy by being prideful. That's why it's very safe to be humble. It's not, it's not somebody, it's not, it's not to put down anybody. It's very safe to be humble. Proverbs 29 and verse number 25. Proverbs 29 and verse number 25. It says, Put that scripture up. It's very safe to be humble. The fear of man brings a snare. Whoso put up his trust, that's not the scripture. Uh, It's a good scripture, but that is not exactly what I want to go to. Uh, Two verses above, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble. Honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low. You have to come down to a low level for the enemy to take you up. You have to come down to the low level of becoming proud hearted, right? That's one scripture. There's another scripture that I want to also get at, where it's talking about safety in somebody who is walking in humbleness. Mm, Where do I have that scripture? Oh, mm, how does it go? There is safety in the person who is walking in humility. Humility, okay, let's see the word. Okay, maybe anyway, we've got some scriptures there. Maybe I'll find the scripture and bring it some. Twenty-three is a good scripture that we read. 
there is another scripture on humility okay maybe we'll see it next time there is safety a humble man is very safe that's 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 the kind of scripture that i'm looking for um There's another scripture also, but that is not what I'm looking for. In Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of the Lord is instruction of wisdom. Before honor is humility. Okay, anyway, it's safe to be humble than to be proud. Okay, going back to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Not a novice. You know, some people who are who have been in the Lord and all of a sudden they become like babies. They become novel. They, 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 they get into the flesh. Right? When you, once you get into the flesh, then you become proud hearted. And thereafter, the enemy can uh, come against you or speak through you. First, first, okay, going back to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 6. Not an always, less being lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Pride is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Right? Pride goes before a fall. Uh, verse 7 says, Moreover, he must, be a, he must have a good report. He must have a good report of them which are without or somebody who needs to not only be having a good reputation in the church, but he has to have a good reputation amongst the people outside. Lest you fall into the reproach or the snare of the devil. Right? So these are warnings that are given to people who can fall into the hands of the devil. Okay, we, are, we read Hebrews. We read Timothy. And uh, okay, we are going back again to the book of Acts. How important... It is for us to know the word and have the help of the Holy Spirit to explain the scriptures. So Philip, he was the spirit-filled preacher whom God appointed at this season to explain or to bring a revelation to uh, 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 the eunuch from Ethiopia. In chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, and verse number 32. Verse 31 we read, and Philip, and he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You need some spirit-filled help. You need some spirit-filled preachers to minister to you. I didn't say people who are weird. I said spirit-filled. They have to be spirit-filled that can help you out. And also, moreover, you, you also need to be full of the Holy Spirit. You need to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And as an evidence of speaking in tongues, right? That, that's, that's the evidence we find. The inauguration of the church was speaking in tongues. We find that God invited 500 people to come to the upper room. Only 120 ended up there. And all 120, they spoke in tongues, Right? When they spoke in tongues and they started praising the Lord and people were amazed. How come they speak in our languages? How come they speak in our languages? How come they speak the good news in our languages? Well, you might be speaking. I remember a long years back, a preacher who was despising tongues and then he was an evangelist. God was still using him. The Spirit of God came upon him and he was... And then he, he heard of a... He, he heard of this uh, uh, lady who was praying in tongues. And then there was somebody who was just seated in front of this lady. He, she was a Japanese who was not even converted. She, was, she didn't know the Lord, but she had just come to church. But somebody just behind her seat was praying in tongues. And all of a sudden, she looked behind and she, she looked at this person didn't look a Japanese person. She said, you have been speaking in Japanese all this while and telling me about Jesus. 
And she didn't even realize that. And she, because, because of that very sign, she accepted the Lord. And she changed her heart. God can do things like that. Right? So don't despise. If you're not for it, then let's get a revelation of speaking in tongues. Right? Acts chapter 8 and verse number, tongues are not seized. Things have not seized. Prophecies are not seized. Tongues are not seized. Right? We are still in the age where tongues and prophecies are still uh, amongst the believers. Acts chapter 8 and verse number 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before the shearer so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. Uh, Who shall declare this generation? For his life. I'm reading Acts chapter 8 and verse 33. His life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip. He said, I've been reading this in the chariots, being seated here. I mean, I've gone to, probably he, he, he has been to Jerusalem and he's returning back. And he's saying, he answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet, of himself or of some other person. Now see, you can read the Bible and you will not know what it's really talking about. You might read the Bible, you might say, I'm having some knowledge, I I have a lot, I'm, I'm an intelligent man. I'm a very intelligent man. I can read the Bible. I understand everything. No, you don't understand without the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot understand anything without the help of the Holy Spirit. All your intelligence means nothing when it comes to the Bible. Well, use it rightly. If you're intelligent enough, use it rightly. Humble yourself and say, God, I need help. I humble myself. Lord, teach me the Bible. I know words. I can write. I can put the words together. I can. I can. I can write books. I'm so intelligent, but that's not enough for you to have some revelation knowledge. You need help. You need the help. The Bible says He's our helper. He's our helper. Let me take you to the book of uh, John. Jesus, just before His ascension. Uh, these are some of the words that He spoke. Okay. Let's see. In John chapter 16 and verse number 5 onwards. John chapter 16 and verse 5 onwards. But now I go my way to him that sent me and none of you ask me whither thou goest. None of you ask me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Verse number seven. Nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Right? And so he says, it is, verse number seven, it is expedient, means it is profitable for you that I go away, that the comforter would come to you. You know, the Holy Spirit is not a judgmental spirit. He's not going to condemn you. He's going to comfort you, and in this comfort, he's going to teach you. Right? He's going to teach you. Verse number 13. Verse number 13. How it, when he... The spirit of truth. Let's understand this. He is the spirit of truth. He knows the Bible. He is the spirit of this Bible. What is this? The truth. If you think of the Bible, it's talking about the truth. So he says, he is the spirit of truth. He is your comforter. When the spirit of truth comes, 
He will guide you into all truth. What does it mean? You don't understand. I don't understand this Bible with all our intelligence. We understand languages. We understand words. But we don't have an insight of what it means. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will guide you into all truth, which means this is the truth that he's going to guide you each step of the way. Every time you read the Bible, you need the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, teach me your word, your comforting word. These words can be comforting when it comes out of the pages into your heart. You might wonder, oh my God, I never have, I, I read this scripture, but I have never read it like this. I didn't understand it. Now I understand. He will guide you into all truth, and he shall speak not of him, he, for he shall not speak of himself. He's only going to speak what's already in the scriptures. He's not going to speak something else or something new. Although he may be able to, but he's still not going to speak of himself. He's going to speak what is already in the truth. But whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak. And he will show you of things to come. There's, 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 a, there's a work of the Holy Spirit in this generation right now, and he's in us. And the Bible talks about he's deep down inside of you. And he's, he's the deepest person inside of you. And the Bible says, deep calleth unto deep. From the Father, he's going to receive and he's going to show you. And he's going to speak to you. He's never going to make a mistake. You'll never be misled when you have the Bible open with the Holy Spirit revealing things to you, right? So make sure that you're going to trust in the Holy Spirit. So finally, in closing, we see Acts. In the book of Acts, we find while in, 20, in verse number 28, while uh, 29 we see while, uh, I'm sorry, 28, while uh, the eunuch was reading the word of God, the spirit of the Lord, at the very same time in the next verse it says, it says the spirit of the Lord came upon, uh, the spirit of the Lord said to Philip, go and join yourself in the chariot. He was reading but the Spirit of the Lord knew that he needs a lot of help. And he sent Philip to come and help him out. So remember one thing. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. In conclusion, we'll read verse number 34. And the eunuch answered Philip, I pray. Okay, we read that. Verse 35, and it says, Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. Same scripture. He was not sure. He said, I don't know. I can't understand what this scripture is, whether he's talking about himself or about somebody else. He took the Isaiah scripture from the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Philip opened his mouth, a spirit-filled man of God. He opened his mouth and began at the same scripture. This man didn't know head or, head or tail about the scriptures. He said, I don't know what he's talking about. He's talking about himself. But he took the same scripture and preached Jesus. How come? Because he was spirit-filled. He was spirit-filled. He was able to explain rightly. That's the reason you need help. You need help of the Holy Spirit. You have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If you're saved, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And you have anointed ministries that will teach you. When you have to, have to. A Bible is not, uh, uh, let me make this statement. Just having the Bible alone is not enough. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit, right? To explain the scriptures to you so that you would no longer be dry. You'll no longer be dry. You have to be spirit filled. If you're spirit-filled, you understand all things, right? He's the author of the book. 
and thereafter we find when he preached Jesus and then everything happened right after that. So you find scriptures that you may not understand. Ask the Holy Spirit and he will help you. Ask the Holy Spirit. Don't despise. He is your helper. He is your helper. He is your helper. And he will lead you into all truth and he would never let you be misguided. You will be able to discern by the Holy Spirit whether you're able to, whether the preacher is preaching right or wrong. Okay? So you'll be blessed. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Every one of us here, Lord, have been called of you, blessed of you, anointed. And Father, you have filled us with your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, if somebody is not filled here, Lord, today, that they can, Lord, be spirit-filled. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, for your grace and your love and your favor upon each and every one of them, Father, Lord, that they would see Jesus in every scripture. They would find Jesus while they read the scriptures of God. It's only by the explanation and the insight of the Holy Spirit they will understand and get a revelation of who Jesus is. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.